Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about how it's done and the person doing the doing. <laughs> the person doing the doing? Yeah. The person who's doing the doing is Leos Janacek. By your request, we're going to talk about how he does it. And this talk has to take a slightly different format from a couple of the others because Janicek's style was so extraordinary. Yes, there are many pages in which he makes an amazing sound, just one page of score with an amazing sound in it. But in this particular case, we really need to talk about a style, an idiom, because there's nothing like this. There's nothing like it at all. And there's nothing like it, not just in its sonic individuality, but also in the way he composes counterpoint and texture and themes and everything about Janicek was janicek -y. And he didn't get to janicek until he was rather old, until he was in his 50s and 60s, and he died when he was 74. And just about everything that we know and love by him, with the exception of a handful of works, was composed in that late period. That remarkable flowering of his maturity when he happened upon his his totally individual style. And what makes it so individual is the fact that Janicek knew. He tried, but he knew. He talked to Dvorak about this. He's, he was not a writer of tunes. And that's sort of tough if you're a Czech composer, especially coming after Dvorak and Smetna, not to be a tunesmith. But he wasn't. And he knew he wasn't. He was able to discover or invent short, punchy, incredibly pregnant and expressive little little themelets, little motives, often based on the rhythms and the inflections of Czech speech. And Czech speech has some fairly odd inflections because it tends to be accented on the first syllable of every word. And many words, because it's an inflected language, a Slavic language, have, have suffixes that have lots of little syllables at the end. And you, you hear this, you hear this quite frequently in spoken Czech. I don't have to give you any examples. Um, listen to Janicek's glagolitic mass and you will hear quite clearly, you know, phrases that end with, they're going, da, 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 da. you know, that is a, the dative case <laughs> or the locative case. It's the odd ending. And he's turned that into the rhythm of a melody. But these melodies tend to be a little bit open-ended because they have those somewhat abrupt, small note endings. And so you want to move on. You want to do other things with them. And that's what Janicek does. So one of his techniques that we're going to talk about is his ability to transform these motives. And some of them are actual tunes. Some of them, he maybe wrote some very beautiful tunes. Don't get me wrong. One thing I, I have to stress, I just have to stress, and I, I'm sorry to break into my train of thought, but that's this, which is that all great composers do everything. The issue is proportion. It's the recipe. It's the balance of ingredients. So yes, Janicek wrote some fabulous tunes. He really did. But that wasn't what his style was based on, as it was, for example, Tchaikovsky or, or to a, a Dvorak or something. As the great tune writer, Schubert, they wrote fabulous tunes. So their style was weighted toward the fabulous tunes they wrote <laughs> and working with those. Janicek did write fabulous tunes, but mostly he worked with these small motives. So let's just keep that in mind. So one of the things, one of the principal elements of his style, and we're really only going to talk about two or three, just not to make ourselves crazy, because there are, of course, many more, was thematic transformation. That is taking these little motives and making them mean different things expressively. And in order to do that, because they're rather brief, Janicek had to stretch them out sometimes, put them in very interesting harmonic contexts. They need to communicate with us rapidly because they're not going to be around too long. And it's this rapid change and repetition and wildly varying expressive nuance in Janicek's music that makes it sound so kaleidoscopic and so remarkably intense because Janicek's music moves quickly. Even when it's marked to be played slowly, it moves quickly.
It really does. Its rate of change is very, very quick, remarkably quick. So that's one thing we're going to talk about. The other aspect of his music that we're going to talk about is ostinato. Now, what is an ostinato? An ostinato is just a repeated rhythmic figure. We did a talk about bolero, how it's done, and you've got that snare drum rhythm. That's an ostinato. It means obstinate in Italian. It doesn't go away. It's stubborn. It's a repeated rhythmic formula. Some of them can be quite long. Most of them are very short, very brief, and they just repeat over and over and over and over again as long as the composer wants to repeat them. Janicek had an enormous fund of ostinati, which is the plural. And he really, I, no composer before him used ostinati, uh, ostinatos, I mean, let's do it in English, ostinatos with the same frequency and characterfulness and imagination as Janicek. There is another composer who was similar, who was an ostinato composer too, and that was Benjamin Britten. Most people don't think of him that way, but he was for the most part. His, he, his music also consists of patches of texture in which melodic or other kinds of thematic material are supported by these repeated ostinato figures, which are very imaginatively colored. And Janicek did that to an unprecedented extent. So I am going to start this little chat with a bit of Janicek's second string quartet and with one of his longer melodies, actually. It's a melody that we hear over an ostinato and it's played three times and three times in which it sounds extraordinarily different. And I have more than one page of score because it takes, I think, let me see, one, two, I think it takes about three pages of score to actually, to actually see it. But it's very easy to see because it's just a string quartet. You have one violin on top, a second violin, a viola, and a cello. That's it. And so there will be several systems on a page because they're grouped in four. You see four lines, then below it, four more lines. That's how it works. And that's all you need to look at. So I'm going to play this passage and I want you simply to see the melody is in the violins. Let me make sure of that here. I'm taking a look at it now. Ah, yes, the melody will be in the violins. In fact, let me put it up for you to see. There it is. See that? The melody is in the first violin and the ostinato is in the viola and the cello. The ostinato in this case is bum ba 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 That's the ostinato. But that ostinato can change as it will at the climax, which you will see. And well, I'm not going to give it away by getting to it. I'm going to keep each page of music up for as long as the quartet is playing it. And then we'll have the next one. And then when you don't see music, the music may go on a little bit beyond um, these excerpt I have here is going to go on a little bit beyond where the music stops, but it doesn't matter. So I'll take it down when you no longer have to look at it. And you can just follow along. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four systems on each page. So you read left to right on the first four, four chunks of music that are covered by this bracket that looks like that, right? Then the next four and the next four and the next four and just follow the tune. You don't have to worry about the ostinato. It's just underneath going like that. And, and so here we go. Let me, let me just move this. There we go. So we have the Pinocchio Quartet on Superfawn, fabulous performance. And you're going to hear how Janicek transforms exactly the same tune um, and makes it sound so different using everything at his disposal, using its range, you know, a pitch where he starts it, what instrument plays it and how loud and how soft it is. And whether it's harmonized a certain way, he'll alter everything to give those little melodies a totally and completely different character. So here we go. Let me, uh, yes, we got the music up. Okay.
quite something, isn't it? I mean, it's really a a unbelievably wide range of passion. I mean, first it's flowing and lyrical, then it's it's very timid and hesitant and 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 disturbed in a minor key, and then it explodes with I mean it screams, it's screaming passion is what it is. It's just unbelievable, but it's exactly the same tune. And it's accompanied all the time by a simple ostinato. The screaming time you may notice the ostinato changed. Instead of yump, bump, 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 it's it's a ya ta ta ta, ya ta ta ta, ya ta ta ta, ya ta ta ta. But but it's always there. It's always there. And and with this technique, it's really quite simple. The the genius of it, of course, is knowing how to use it, how to do it. Remember, everything is made of the same ingredients. The genius is in what to do with them. And Janicek knew what to do with them and what he did with them no one else had ever done before. So having looked at a string quartet, I wanted to look at a string quartet because I think it's, it's first of all, it's easier to see. And I think this example is particularly easy to follow since it's the same tune repeated three times in, in rapid succession. And so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Next, we are going to talk about a big orchestral work, the Sinfonietta, his most famous orchestral work, probably, scored for huge orchestra, including 14 trumpets. We're not going to hear all those trumpets. You can go listen to the piece, this is the fanfare from the Sinfonietta. But this is even more remarkable, if that's possible, than the string quartet because of the sound that he gets from the orchestra. Because in addition then to the ostinato and the, and the variation, the constant evolving variation expressively of his little melody lets, little mellow, mellow ditzas, little tunelets, we now have tone color. And Janicek's view of tone color, like everything else in his music, was like nobody else's. Truly, truly like nobody else's. Now, I want you to hear a little, a little something. This is the uh, Sinfonietta on Naxos with Antony Witt conducting the, the Warsaw Philharmonic. Marvelous performance. But I'm just going to play you an opening melody, and then we'll take, a, take it apart and take a look at it. It's very short, just a few seconds of music. I'm just going to smile while it's going on. Listen to this. What would you say is making that particular sound if you had to, uh, you know, make a list of what's playing? It's awfully strange, isn't it? But the fascinating thing about Janicek is particularly in his late works, he wanted to make the strangest possible sound with the smallest possible number of instruments so that his music has no padding. Everything is doing something and plays an active role in the texture. And in order to do that, he made himself draw his own bar lines. You know those five lines that the musical notes are on? He drew them freehand. So you can only imagine, and because he was like an insane guy anyway, and as quirky and passionate and, and you know, just impulsive as his music sounds, you could just imagine what those things looked like. <laughs> you know, the five lines, I mean, they're like, you know, <laughs> with notes all over them. And, and, and he had copyists, he would just scribble it all down in, in, in score, he didn't sketch. He didn't have to, he just wrote it into full score with as many lines as he needed. And when he wanted another instrument, he'd draw five more lines and stuff them in there. Then he'd hand the mess to his copyist and say, here, make an orchestral score out of that. So, and he did that with whole operas and he did it with huge orchestras. I mean, so his, his manuscripts are just, I mean, they make Beethoven, who was notoriously messy, look absolutely impossible impeccably tidy by comparison. But that this is one of the ways he gets this extraordinary sound. By, by knowing if he wanted to use another instrument, he would have to go through the trouble of effectively writing his own music paper before he could put down a note. And, and that is really 
demands you hit it. I don't know what else to tell you. It's just nuts. But the result is phenomenal. So you heard that opening sound, that opening strange bit of the second movement of the Sinfonietta. Now let's look at the score and let me get it up here as well so we can all talk about it at the same time. I mean, this is so remarkable. Okay. Here it is. There it is. So, <laughs> take a look. What do we have playing? We have two flutes, which are not playing anything in the excerpt that I played for you. They're, they might as well not be there. Two oboes, which eventually do play four bars. You've got clarinets. Now, the clarinets have the ostinato. You see that? They're going, they're on the third line from the top, and they're going, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. That's the ostinato. And then you've got below that two bassoons and four muted trombones in their lowest register, the bottom. I mean, that's really, really low and really snarly. And then you've got the entire string section, which has two pizzicato notes. They just go plonk, and then they go plonk, and then they have one more lighter plonk where it's marked allegretto. And the allegretto section brings in the tunelet. The tunelet is played on the oboes, the two oboes with a single clarinet note below it. Da 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 The clarinet adds the da da. Da 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 That's the whole excerpt that I played for you. You can see those double lines with the the two the, like the the what looks like a a semicolon or a colon on either side. That's a repeat sign. See on the top it says one and then two. That's play the first ending the first time you play it and the second ending the second time you play it. Now, there is no way, human way, any even musically very erudite and astute person could come up with that combination just by listening alone. And one of the reasons Janicek's music has taken so long to sink in or took so long to sink in outside of Czechoslovakia is because looking, you can't look at it. What it looks like on paper has nothing to do with what it really sounds like in real life. Does it sound like you only have at that opening, that opening, you've got the bassoons, the trombones, the clarinets, like three instruments playing? You have this huge orchestra. It doesn't sound thin. It doesn't sound like he's being, he's being abstemious in his use of instruments. It just sounds remarkable. And it's already moving. It's already going quickly. So it has energy already. And, you know, there's no way to tell from, from the look of the page what this stuff is going to sound like. And I'm now I'm going to play you another one. And you saw also, by the way, this page, it has, it has two systems, right? You've got, you know, it, you can see from the, on the left where the instruments are marked that you've got flutes, oboes, etc. Then you look below the little two railroad tracks there and you see the same instruments listed again. So you can see that there's, it's actually two complete systems on that single page. So Yenicek packs a lot into a very small space. And that's one of the features of his style. Now, this entire movement is going to operate essentially as a set of, of evolving variations on that material, the ostinato and that little tune. And you're going to hear some amazing things. Think about how that tune sounded. Remember, da 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 Remember the last notes. Da 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 da. I did it a few times for a reason, because the next piece of music we're going to look at is the climax of this movement. Now the climax comes after a lot of stuff happening, and we're going to run the whole movement. By the way, once you know what to listen for, I want you to just run and pay run it and pay attention to it. And there are other tunes in this movement. Janicek does not write, this is about five and a half minutes, he does not write um, a, what is for him a longish movement and never vary the thematic material. I mean, he's not an idiot. <laughs> he changes the thematic material and works that into the ongoing process of evolution and alternates the new stuff with the old stuff in different forms. I mean, you know, he's, he does what composers do, but that's not, that's not so unique to him. 
I mean, in the sense that, you know, most composers know when it's time to do something else. That's sort of like a, a basic ability that if you're a composer, you have to have. So let's look now, let's look now at this, at this page, which is, let me see, what do we got here? Ooh, baby. Now this is the climax. Now you'd think when you've got an orchestra that consists of, I mean, it's just a huge orchestra with a piccolo and two flutes and, 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 and two oboes and two clarinets and two bassoons and three trumpets and four trombones and a tuba and, you know, percussion and all kinds of stuff happening in a full string section. You've seen scores that we've done before. They lay out fairly largely on the page. But look at this. What is playing here? So we'll take a look at the first system. That is the top half of the page. We've got, let's see, a piccolo, a, a couple of flutes, a couple of oboes, two horns. There are four in the whole work. Um, then we've got three trumpets and all playing the same thing, more or less. Uh, and then a bunch of trombones, four trombones and the tuba and then the strings. Now. The strings have the ostinato. It's ya da 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 That's the ostinato. The trumpets have the tune. Everyone else is just holding holding a note. They're just holding the harmony against which the trumpets are are playing their melody. So I'm going to play you this page of music now. Again, it goes by rather quickly because it's Janicek, and and. Just, it's amazing how it sounds. It's as grand and big a climax as you will ever hear. But look at how few instruments he's using to get it. How few lines of music that are going on and how simple it is. Sustained chords, a tune, and the ostinato. dum ba da 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 That's all it is. So here it is. <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary. It really is. What do I need to say? I don't need to say anything else other than let's hear the whole movement now and I pay attention, pay attention to the evolution of the themes and pay attention to the moving ostinatos. There, you've heard a couple of them. There's at the beginning and that becomes yum ba da dum ba da dum ba da dum ba da and then that wonderful, there's a wonderful one right after that big climax where the harp gets it, just the harp. I mean, the sounds that Janicek is making are just unbelievable. And they come from using very few instruments, always soloistically with unblended timbres. He's not mixing his colors. They're all primary colors. And gosh, it's amazing. So here's the whole movement. Here we go.
gave you a sense of what Janacek is up to as a composer. There truly was no one like him. Nobody, and there has really been, aside from Benjamin Britten, who is an ostinato-style composer, but he doesn't sound anything like Janacek. I mean, there's really been nobody since. He did have students, and some of his students do sound a bit like him. We've, we've played a few bits from some of his students. They're rather good, actually, but Janacek was Janacek. At the end of the day, there isn't anything like Janicek. I hope this little discussion of how it's done gave you at least some of the basic elements of his style. And believe me, it'll work. When you listen to anything by Janicek, listen for the little tunelet, listen to how it evolves, and listen for ostinatos that keep things moving. And if it's a late work of Janicek, that's basically what you're going to need to know. And the rest of it, all of the other things that he throws in there, are just to keep things interesting. But the essence of it it's just that are those two simple elements. And what he makes of it, oh my, unbelievable. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>